even as the wind winds down tonight, we're going to be setting our attention on some snow coming on Saturday, and it is going to accumulate. So winds of change. The wind advisory will expire at 8 o'clock. I'll have your complete forecast straight ahead. Karen? All right. Thank you, Paul. First at four, a COVID vaccine faces a new review. We are tracking the process at the CDC and what it could mean for all of us. The 2020 census is also getting a second look, and Detroit, we have a problem. According to some new results, we're going to show you that. Plus, here's Megan Woods. We show you the creative way two Detroit favorites are teaming up to recognize champions in the community. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, it has been another day of some wild winds out there, but they should be blowing out of town soon, and we are seeing fewer power outages today than we did over the weekend. DTE website showing about 10,000 customers in the dark. Now, for the latest in terms of weather and what we can expect, let's send it over to Paul. Yeah, thanks, Karen. And that DTE website showing the number of outages, that shows you the difference between what we had Saturday and what we had today. Saturday, 60 plus mile an hour gusts. Today, mostly 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts. Wind advisory is in effect for most of us until 8 o'clock this evening, but now expired for Lenaway and Monroe counties. You can see the current gusts now, generally between 30 and 40 miles per hour, but you can see gusting to 41 at Metro, gusting to 52, though, over in Lansing. And temperature wise, we are still mild, but here comes the cold front. Look at this. Six downtown at City Airport, 46 in Lansing. And as we move through the evening hours, once that front comes through, it will be a very sharp drop in temperature. So by late evening, it's going to be down near 40 or even in the 30s. Be back to talk about that Saturday snow in just a few minutes, Karen. Thank you, Paul. Here's some breaking news as the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine is getting a second look from CDC advisors. The CDC just voted on new recommendations that could affect your choice for COVID vaccinations. Kimberly Gill with the latest. So Kim, what are we hearing? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Sometimes vaccines are developed in labs far away from the public glare. That has not been the case for COVID-19. As new research becomes available, regulatory agencies need to keep assessing the risk and reward of each option. So just moments ago, the CDC's advisory panel voted in favor of new guidance saying mRNA COVID-19 vaccines are preferred over the J&J &J vaccine for the prevention of COVID-19 for those age 18 and older. The vote was unanimous with all 15 outside experts supporting the, cha the change in guidance. The J&J &J vaccine is authorized for use in people 18 and older and can be used as a booster shot for adults fully vaccinated with J&J, &J, Pfizer or Moderna. But there have been concerns about a rare type of blood clotting only linked to that J&J &J vaccine. Listen. I think the CDC committee discussion today is really important and it proves that the data are being reviewed on a continuous basis. Now, the concern is that in the time since April, there have been more cases of the rare serious adverse reaction called thrombosis with thrombocytopenia. That actually caused the FDA recently to update the EUA fact sheet to reflect that the complication can occur in about one out of every 100,000 shots with the highest risk in 30 to 49 year old women. Given this new information, the updated guidance makes sense. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, thank you. And Dr. McGeorge is digging into today's discussion and vote, and he'll be joining us again for Local 4 News at 5. Karen, for now, though, we'll send it back to you. I always appreciate it. Thank sure. you, Kim. We do have some other news. It is a pre-Christmas celebration for families of a missionary group kidnapped in Haiti. The Haitian National Police say all of the remaining hostages have now been released. Officers did not give many details, but announced the release of the 12 remaining hostages just a few hours ago. The Ohio group was building an orphanage in Haiti when 17 members were kidnapped by a gang with a reputation for extreme violence. The missionaries were taken in October, and the gang was demanding a $1 million ransom per person. We'll follow, following this closely, of course, we'll keep you posted as we learn more about the release and also those homecomings of the hostages. New research showing some trouble with the 2020 census right here in Detroit. An analysis by the University of Michigan found the census was undercounted by 8% in certain neighborhoods. In 2019, the Census Bureau estimated 670,000 people lived in Detroit. The official count released earlier this year found just over 639,000. That's a drop of 31,000. 
Detroit also had the lowest self-response rate to the census among all cities with at least 500,000 residents. Mayor Mike Duggan wants a more detailed count. The U.S. government has inflicted an inequity of monumental proportion on the people of the city of Detroit. All we want as Detroiters is to be counted. They had one job and they missed by a huge number. They have uh, estimated we're at 639,000. Uh, and if you look at Professor Mornoff's study, which matches DTE's data, the city of Detroit has got 700,000 people. Over half a trillion dollars in federal funding are allocated to states based on census counts. An undercount results in a reduction in financial resources. Detroit police are investigating after a man is shot and killed and he was just sitting on his couch happened about 3 o'clock this morning at a home on Coryville Street on the city's east side. Investigators say a 69-year-old man was struck when someone fired as many as six shots from outside the home. Those that know the victim do not believe he could have been the target. Police are looking for two suspects and say security video from nearby homes may just help them find them. We'll have an update on the investigation when you join us tonight at 5. There are more questions than answers about this horrible scene also on Detroit's east side. A car smashed into a daycare last night at the spot where Seven Mile, Moross and Kelly come together. A young woman in the car died. We're told that she was on the phone with relatives telling them someone was shooting at the car before the crash. The man driving the car said the same thing and admitted he was driving pretty fast. Attorneys for a former Minnesota police officer tried to get the quick acquittal today, but they failed. Prosecutors rested their case against Kim Potter. She is accused of killing Duante Wright in suburban Minneapolis, but claims it was an accident. Her attorneys argued prosecutors hadn't proved their case. The judge disagreed. The first witness for the defense says Potter and her fellow officers were legally required to arrest him during a traffic stop because he had an outstanding warrant. Potter has said she planned to use her taser to subdue Wright, but fired a gun instead. All right, let's focus on this local success story. Many of you have been following the Detroit Youth Choir since they wow the audiences of America's Got Talent. Well, this is a new music video from the choir that's all about giving back. Local force Megan Wood shows us a new collaboration designed to boost the lives of more Metro Detroiters. Life Remodeled started recognizing these 10 champions across the city with billboards, but they decided to take it up a notch. That's when they decided to lean on their friends at the Detroit Youth Choir. Sometimes in our life, we all have pain, we all have sorrow. It's a familiar tune with a slight edit. Lyrics that truly resonate with Detroit Youth Choir. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Life Remodel is uh, a heaven sent to our organization because uh, they were one of the uh, first places to take us in after we returned from uh, Los Angeles. It's also the title of Life Remodeled's newest campaign, Lean on We. This campaign is setting out to put the spotlight where the spotlights do on phenomenal students and community members in the Durfee Central community. Those community members make a cameo in the music video. We, we, we are These individuals that we've highlighted are heroes in the city of Detroit. And many Detroiters know who they are already but we wanted to spread that message far and wide about uh, just their heroic efforts. For the talented voices singing the remake of the Bill Withers classic, the experience goes beyond the notes. The kids will uh, hopefully get out of the song Lean On We, just like the original song Lean On Me, uh, the, the message of uh, being together, joining hands and, you know, helping each other out. Always to me. And the reality is, we all need somebody to lean on. So I'm so proud of these 10 individuals who are working collectively to make Detroit a better city. That you won't let show. You just call on me, bro. In Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. We all need somebody to lean on.